Good evening and welcome back to Dunmo Baptist Church. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for another opportunity to read and consider your word together. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the time and the inclination to get together and to do these things. But Lord, we can't do it in our own strength. Lord, left to ourselves, reading your word is just reading words. Maybe interesting words or maybe not interesting words, but it doesn't do anything. Lord, we pray for the enabling of your Holy Spirit, that we may not only read your word, but that we may understand it, that we may see the one who is the subject of the scriptures, the one who is the word who became flesh and lived amongst us, that we may see Jesus. Open our eyes and show us our Saviour, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to read this evening from the Psalms. <clears throat> I want to read Psalm 27. Psalm 27, a psalm of David. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil doers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war arise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I have asked of the Lord, that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble, he will conceal me under the cover of his tent, he will lift me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. You have said, Seek my face. My heart says to you, Your face, Lord, do I seek. Hide not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger. O you who have been my help, cast me not off, forsake me not, O God of my salvation. For my father and my mother have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me in. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Give me not up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have arisen against me. They breathe out violence. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Amen. Mighty God and loving Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ, the subject of your word. Thank you for the privilege of reading it. Help us now to understand it. In Jesus' name, Amen. The overall subject for our evening services, as you may know, is that we're looking for pictures of Jesus in the Old Testament. We've looked at pictures which we see in people and in things. And here is one which uh, David gives us 
calling, well, stating that the Lord is my light. And that surely is a picture of Jesus, the light of the world. So that was, that's our text, Psalm 27 verse 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? So it's about a, a thousand years before Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life, which is recorded in John 8, verse 12. David's saying the same thing. The Lord, the I am, is my light. And he goes through in the rest of the psalm to outline and to rejoice in what that means in practice. How does having the light of the Lord, walking in the light, walking with Jesus in New Testament terms, what does that mean to David? And that's what I want to look at this evening. Now, those who are familiar with the Psalms, which when Jesus said, I am the light of the world, in John 8, 12, that would have been most of his audience because the Psalms were the hymn book that they used at the uh, temple and synagogue services. Those familiar with the Psalms, Jesus claiming to be the light of the world was pretty much equivalent to Jesus saying, I am the Lord, which of course he is. The Pharisees got the message. You read the context of John chapter 8, you will find that the chapter ends with them picking up stones to throw at Jesus because they objected to what he was saying. As Jesus says in, early on in his ministry in uh, John 3 verse 20, everyone who does wicked things hates the light and doesn't come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. So Jesus is claiming to be the light of the world. Jesus is claiming to be the Lord, the light. And David is very much saying the same thing. The Lord is my light. Jesus, the same yesterday, today and forever, Hebrews 13 verse 8 tells us, and so it's no surprise to find David's experience of God is the same as ours is in the New Testament. So in Psalm 27, we see Jesus, the light of the world. And in Jesus, we see David's Lord, capital letters, in human form. So let's consider the text. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And I want to look at just the three obvious points which come up in that verse. I want to look firstly at the light and then at the stronghold and then at the salvation. Light, stronghold, salvation. It's an interesting point. Well, I suppose it's a bit interesting anyway, that most of our most dangerous enemies are the ones that hide in the dark. You know, if you if you know what's coming, if you can see what's coming, a physical enemy who approaches in full view, you can see the size of the problem, you can sometimes deal with that, even avoid it. But the ones that hide in the dark are really very difficult. Of course, we know that as Christians, as God's children, um, even in the worst case scenario, enemies can only hurt a body, they can't hurt anything else. Um, but even though that is a, is a comfort, that is an encouragement, we still find that the ones who hide in the dark are the most dangerous because we don't see them coming. But from a Christian point of view, the devil and his agents who attack us always attack in the dark, always hides, may not be pitch black. I find the devil likes to hide in a fog, 
kind of just can't get a handle on what's going on, but something's getting at you. And it's dangerous. They attack from the shadows. They attack from a mist. And you can't get a handle on quite what's wrong. Well, as a strong torch will send spiders and other creepy crawlies running in a dark place, so a close walk with Jesus will cause the devil to flee. In James chapter 4, verses 6 to 7, James tells us that God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Now, <laughs> human beings being what we are, we quite often like to just swipe the end of James' bit there and, and say, resist the devil, and think, oh yeah, I can do that. And, and we try to fight the devil in our own strength. That's not what James is saying at all. James is saying, God opposes the proud. He gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves to God, and that way resist the devil. Walk closely with Jesus. Be with the light. Don't even think about standing in your own strength, that's pride. Totally rely on Jesus, that's submission, and that's like shining a torch at the spiders in the dark. That's like shining a torch, a, a real big fog light, into the fog. That way you resist the devil, not in your own strength, but uh, with Jesus, with his strength. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Nothing to be afraid of if you can see what's going on. You've got a light which chases things away. That's how you resist the devil. That's why he flees. Not because you're strong, not because you're resisting the powerful, but because you've got Jesus. And he cannot stand in the light. Spiritually speaking, any and every evil thing can't stand the light of Jesus Christ. So, verse 2. When evil doers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. Now, as far as I'm aware, David never had to deal with cannibals, never had to deal with flesh-eating spiders in dark caves or anything like that. He's talking spiritual enemies, enemies who desire to consume us. That's what the devil wants to do. He wants to consume us. He wants to make us part of his empire, part of his evil being want to eat up our lives and you look around the world and you see people whose lives are being destroyed eaten up by sin that's what the devil's after but when we have the Lord Jesus Christ even if there are thousands of them though an army encamp against me my heart shall not fear though war arise against me yet in that I will be confident how why because we've got this powerful light which causes the enemies to run, causes them to panic, causes them to flee, messes up their best laid plans. It's not our strength, it's not our wisdom, it's not our goodness, it's nothing to do with us really, it's just that we have God, the light. Let's say it's all spiritually speaking, walking in the light, walking with Jesus, the enemies flee. The only time we get worried, the only time we get afraid, the only time we need, ought to get worried or afraid is when we are in our own strength, when we are trying to fight off spiritual enemies by our own wisdom, skill, Bible knowledge, piety, prayer times, whatever it is, any time we are trying to pull ourselves up by our own spiritual bootlaces, we will fail and we ought to be worried. But when we are in the light, close with Jesus, totally resting in him, we are safe. We are secure. Now, of course, there, there is a, a little bit of a problem with this. When you walk in the light with Jesus, 
you want more, more and more. No matter how well you know Jesus, no matter how much light shines on your path, you still want more. And so David, verse 4, one thing I have asked of the Lord, and that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life and gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and inquire in his temple. Now again, David was not asking to take up residence in the temple, didn't even exist in his day. And uh, living in the tabernacle was not an option available to anyone. David is just wanting to be in God's house, to be with God. Jesus says, in my father's house, many rooms. I go to prepare a place for you. David is looking forward by faith. The Spirit is showing David things that Jesus spoke of later. One day we will be with him. The dwelling place of God will be with his people. We will be God's dwelling place. We will be in his house forever. We will gaze upon the beauty of the Lord. We will inquire or uh, meditate, footnote, in his temple, taken up with God. The Apostle Paul had a similar idea. Um, my desire is to depart, to be with Christ, which is far better. Philippians 1 verse 23. But David has a confident assurance. Look at the end of the psalm. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong. Let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. David's looking to gaze upon God's uh, glory in the land of the living. That's, that's in the new heaven, the new earth, where there is no death, no sorrow, no dark crying, where there is life, eternal life. At the moment, we live in the valley of the shadow of death, the land of the living. David's looking forward to eternal life in the presence of God. Strong reminder of the, uh, the confidence that living in the light gives us. Yes, we long for more, but yes, the more will be there. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. What is there to fear then? Evil cannot touch our life if we walk in the light. As the Apostle Paul puts it, your life is hidden with Christ in God, Colossians 3 verse 3. Or as David says in our text, the Lord is the stronghold of my life. Our life is hidden with Christ in God. Stronghold. Life safe. So let's look at the, the stronghold. A stronghold is a refuge tower, a place where the enemies can't get into. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 10 tells us the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous man runs into it and is safe. Now, to fully explore that proverb, you need to go through the Bible, looking at all the places where God says, I am. I am the Lord, your righteousness. I am the Lord, your saviour, Jesus, Jehovah, saves. No, I am the Lord. You'll find just how strong the stronghold is. But in our context here, in Psalm 27, David is kind of dividing himself into two parts. There is his life which is safe in the stronghold, his spiritual life, walking in the light with Jesus, and there is the life that he has to live as a human being on earth. Spiritual life, walking with Jesus, totally secure for all eternity. As uh, he says in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. And uh, Jesus said, I know my sheep. Nobody's going to pluck my sheep out of my hands. We're safe in the stronghold, spiritually speaking. But there is also physical life. David was a warrior. He wouldn't have felt in the least bit safe, stuck in a tower, no matter how tall and strong the tower was, surrounded by his enemies. Towers can be pulled down. Towers that keep enemies out also keep you in. What are you supposed to eat? 
towers can be burned and be smoked out. So the name of the Lord is a stronghold, yes, but physically David wasn't hiding in a tower. Christians are not called to hide themselves in monasteries or to lock themselves up in ivory towers or, or whatever. There is a fight to be fought. Battles need to be entered into. Enemies need to be conquered. We don't cower in a tower, but we go out to fight the good fight of faith, to earnestly contend for the truth, to proclaim the gospel to every creature, to stand before kings in the name of Christ, and to preach whatever it is the Holy Spirit gives us under those circumstances to say. We're like sheep amongst wolves. We're like lights in the dark, very easy target. So spiritually speaking, the name of the Lord, our stronghold, our tower, safe untouchable. But on the other hand, physically, we're out there, or we should be, having a well, suffering all the opposition and hatred and difficulty which living in a world which hates God gives to his people. And we have a very real problem with fear, because we are human. <laughs> we know that spiritually speaking we say, but we don't want to die. The body hates death, it fears it. Don't mind being dead, but we don't want to die. So, Psalm 23, David is comforted by the shepherd's rod and staff. And here he, he has the, the, the picture of the tower which keeps our life, our, our spiritual life eternally secure. But also, in verse 5, he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. Now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around, round about me, all round me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. God's with us in the battle. I'm with you always, even to the end of the world, Jesus said. God takes a real loving interest in his people. He's not called Father for nothing. You, know, you think of the, the most loving and supportive and strong and dependable parents you can imagine. God's all that and more. God is completely understanding our situation. And we can be hiding safe and secure in him, whilst at the same time physically fighting battles, or spiritually fighting battles, being persecuted, being troubled, being sick, being whatever. As, Rome, as Paul puts it in Romans 8 verse 28, all things work together for good for those who love God. If it's not for our good, it won't happen. If it's not going to do us something worthwhile, it will not touch us. That's a very safe stronghold from which to look at life. Safe in the arms of Jesus, as the old hymn puts it. So David rejoices in the light. Jesus is the light. He takes refuge in the Lord. He takes refuge in Jesus. As uh, John 3.16, second half, whoever believes in him shall not perish, shall not perish, but have eternal life. That's a stronghold where we can be very secure. Whatever happens, the Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my stronghold. Whom, of whom shall I be afraid? Which takes us back, I suppose, to the third point, which is actually the second one in the verse. Salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I put this one third because this is one which is very much a, a kind of a New Testament thing. David was fighting battles and, and being physical. And 
yes, we are occasionally in battles, but generally speaking, Christians don't fight. We love our enemies, we don't fight them. And though we may phys get physical sometimes because we have to, that's, that's, that's not really what Christians do. But light brings a, a big snag. It shows things up. You know, if you're, if you're carrying a bright light, yeah, it may make your enemies cower, but it also shines on you. Walking with Jesus in the light, we are totally exposed. Every thought, every word, every attitude, however secret, is open to God's view. Well, actually... That's true whether you're walking in the light or not. Hebrews 4.13 says, No creature is hidden from his sight, but we are all naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. Nonetheless, the natural thought of humanity is that we can keep things in the dark. We can keep quiet about it and nobody will ever know, and so on and so forth. But coming to Jesus, walking in the light, means that we openly acknowledge our sins to him. We openly acknowledge our sins to one another. We confess our sins to one another and pray for one another. Yeah. Okay, we don't tell them everything because sometimes it's not a good idea, but generally speaking, we acknowledge the fact we are sinners. And we want God to know. Psalm 139, verse 23, David again, Search me, O God, know my heart, try me, know my thoughts. Now, we, we want God to know. This is what happens when we are born again of the Holy Spirit. We, we come to God just as we are, with our totally messed up life, and we want God to sort it all out for us. We want him to really know the problem. Uh, this may not be a particularly splendid example, but I remember once as a child bringing a, a totally messed up airfix kit. You know those things that you get a load of bits of plastic and you put them all together and it makes this wonderful aircraft or something like the picture on the box. I think mine might have been a train, I'm not sure. But anyway, you bring this totally messed up thing with glue all over the place and all the bits in the wrong place and it doesn't work and you just dump the lot on your father's lap and say, be sorted out. Quite confident that your father will be able to pick it all to pieces, put it all back together again and make it look like the picture on the box. Well, that may be a tall order for a human father, but that's what we do with our lives and we bring it to God. And he does. We are totally dependent on him. We, we totally trust him. We want him to know every little sordid detail. Because they all need putting right before we can be happy. Totally dependent on the love of Jesus to make us what we should be. The power of God to make us what we should be. And in the light we see the problem. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord shows me what a complete and utter horrible mess I am and makes me completely right in his sight. Whom shall I fear? Light and salvation. Now the Apostle John picks up on this in his first letter. John chapter 1, uh, 1 John 1 and verse 5. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light. Same message, the Lord is my light. And in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him whilst walking in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Well, that's obvious. The Lord is my light. We walk in the light. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. 
we realize that Christians are all the same. We're all sinners. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. We all are totally indebted to Christ. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Walking in the light, we want God to know. And when God knows, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. So walking in the light is constant conviction of our own failure. Walking in the light is a constant realisation of our need of the blood of Christ to cleanse us. Constant realisation of our need of his help. And a constant realisation of <laughs> our fellowship with every other Christian on earth. You know, sometimes you, you hear people talking as though Christians are perfect people. Uh, and they say, oh, I was so surprised when I heard him say that. And he calls himself a Christian. No. We are human. And we fail constantly. Indeed, Christians sometimes fail worse than others because we know what is right. We've seen the light. We love the light. We love the Lord. And still, we do what we shouldn't do. But we have fellowship with one another. We see a brother taken in a fault. We seek to restore them, yes. But we acknowledge that in their situation, we'd probably be stuck in the same fault. We, are, we love one another. We support one another. We have fellowship with one another. We rejoice together like Mary, the mother of Jesus, in God our Saviour. Resting in total security of his salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? <laughs> what can touch you? God sees it all and does it all. And so verse 6, David says, Now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies all round me. I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. All our enemies around about us, that's sin. That's our enemy, that's our chief enemy, sin. And we're lifted up above it because of the sacrifice that Christ has made. In verses 8 and 10, you said, Seek my face. My heart says to you, your face, Lord, do I seek. Hide not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger. O you who have been my help, cast me not off, forsake me not, O God of my salvation. For my father and my mother have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me in. Comfort and love. Even when we mess up so badly that nobody else really wants to know us. Even when we are so sinful that we fall out of fellowship with God's people one way or another. The Lord will take us in. There is help. There is blessing. God will not hide his face from us. We need help to avoid problems. Teach me your way, verse 11, O Lord. Lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Sin is always trying to divert us. Sin is always trying to get at us. Lord, lead me on a level path. Give me not up to the will of my adversaries. For false witnesses have risen against me. They breathe out violence. You've heard the devil, haven't you? Oh, you've done that. Oh, there's no hope for you now. That's a false witness. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin. False witnesses are trying constantly to beat us down, to say, you call yourself a Christian and you've done that. No. In, false witnesses are risen. They breathe out violence. 
God will not give us up to those false witnesses. Trust him. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? And yet going through life, fear comes to us very much, very often. But we have the victory. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, in the new heaven, the new earth. I shall be in the presence of God. God's house will be with us. We will be God's house. Why? Because the Lord is the stronghold of my life. Because Jesus is the light and my salvation. Wait. Trustfully, wait on the Lord, for the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. His timing is perfect. Everything's working to a purpose and a plan. And as we walk in the light, he is in the light. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Therefore we know one day, through his power, for his sake, we shall be with him forever. Amen. Mighty God, loving Heavenly Father, Thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ, the light of the world, the light that shone into our hearts to give us the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The light which shines in the face of our enemies and causes them to flee. The light that shows us our sin and drives us to the same. Lord, shed abroad your light in our lives more and more, we pray. Teach us more and more to love and to rest in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, and deliver us from evil. Lord, deliver us from those sins which so easily beset us. I thank you that our life is safe in the stronghold of your grace, and that one day, we shall be with you and like you for eternity.